G'day guys, welcome back to Make Mini Models. I've got a glue review and a, a comparison today because um, I've just recently picked up, if you've been following me on lately, the last couple, about a week or so, I've uh, grabbed myself a bottle of EFD Simply Glues uh, Tetra, it's a plastic solvent uh, glue. Very, very similar to, and I'm not going to say identical because it is different, very, very similar to the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Uh, as you can see, I'm just going to spin them both around. Give them a quick shake. Yeah, it's yeah, very, very runny. Very, very runny. And it's pretty much the same as the um, Tamiya Extra Thin in consistency. Well, not much difference at all. Um, and, and this was $12.60 Australian, just if you guys are wondering. Um, I'm also going to put uh, the the web address on the bottom of the screen, just long, well, I'll put it along here somewhere, um, just so you can see it, you don't miss out, and also there's going to be a link in the description box down below, so all you do is just click on it, and some of you may be wondering, you know, why I've already done the review on the Google Plus um, live product testing the other day, why am I doing it again? It was basically to show, um, show you guys early, um, a, kind of like a sneak peek of what's coming up and and just to see if I was happy with the product that you know because it was my first day using it so I just wanted to get used to using it before I um, actually do this video in high definition and more or less to you know I've told some of you guys that I was, I've got this new glue and they and you've asked me about it so I just quickly slapped that view up so you can see so what we got in front of me here is I've got the Revell Contact the Professional uh, with the needle applicator. So if you guys are familiar with this product, it's got the old needle applicator in it. You just basically squeeze and apply. And we've also got the the good old Tamiya Extra Thin down here with its little brush. So if you've never seen a sign of these either, it just comes with a little brush applicator. And the new product here that I've got is the Tetra um, EFD Simply Glues. And this one doesn't come with any applica uh, application tools. It's just, yeah, you need your own paintbrush. And before I go any further, with the paintbrush, make sure it is a natural hair brush. Don't go use a synthetic brush because apparently it eats it. Um, so I've been told by Ian. And make sure that you don't use a plastic handle. Um, or plastic handled paintbrush because that will also eat eat away because it is a read on the bottom of the bottle here it says suitable for uh, ABS, PVC and styrene so you know they're all plastic so if you have a plastic handle yeah, it's just going to get eaten and you're not going to have a paintbrush anymore um, and so what we're going to do we've just got some plastic card 1.5mm thick plastic card here uh, by Evergreen so I've just chopped them up um, pretty much you know, this uh, fairly the same or kind of the same size as each other and I've just got some clear sprue off of clear parts um, off, I think it's out of a Hobby Boss kit I think Hobby Boss um, Spitfire so 172 I believe it was so what we're going to do we're just going to end up gluing um, the styrene or the clear parts on each of these bits of plastic on the bottom here, they're all labelled so we can do a comparison at the end of the video and also I'm going to glue um, the two pieces so there's like that onto each other and we're just going to see how quick it it um, binds together, welds together, we're also going to see how the the finish is um, like the cleanliness of the join and we're also going to have a look at um, how quick the the styrene starts to bind together because it is a tricky um, tricky part. You haven't got any lugs, you haven't got any pinholes to line it up with. Like on your model kit, it's basically just two bits of plastic, bang, stuck on like that with no support. So um, we're gonna have a look at that as well. And also before I continue. Um, this Tetra, if you if you do go to the EFD Simply Glues um, website, 
they do, as far as I know and what I've been told um, by some friends of mine on Facebook, um, some modelling friends, they do post overseas. A uh, friend of mine, Jermaine, has inquired about it after seeing my video and he has said that they do post to, I think, the US. Um, and Jonathan, I think he has uh, um, got gotten in contact with them. But I haven't spoke to him yet because he's he lives in the UK, so he's going to try and get some over there as well. But and that's not the only thing. Um, and I did say that this was twelve dollars sixty a bottle. Also, <laughs> you're going to love this too. They also make a two hundred. <coughs> excuse me. They also make a two hundred mil bottle, and you can pick that for about um, twenty dollars, twenty dollars seventy, I think, Australian. Um, they also make a 500 ml bottle, okay, for forty dollars and forty cents, or forty one dollars and forty cents. I think these are priced as from September two thousand and fourteen. I think it was on their website, because uh, I've got it stuck behind me there. Um, and they've also, and this is probably what I'll end up getting after a while. They make a liter bottle, so you can buy this stuff in a liter bottle uh, for seventy one dollars. I said, so work that out with, with your Tammy Extra Thin. You try and buy a litre of this stuff, it's going to cost you a fortune. Um, so, here's, here we go, you guys. Right, eh? So, what we're going to do now is we're just going to grab, well, first of all, we're just going to start off with the good old Revell um, plastic, or what do they call it? The. Um, liquid glue for plastics so that's what it says on the bottom here and yeah this is pretty cheap and I do like using this glue and this review and I'm gonna say it this review isn't to say um, this glue is the best use it this glue is the best use it or this glue is the best use it it's got it is just a comparison guys so like um, I'm not I'm not ripping into any of these companies at all because I do like all three of these glues. So first of all, we're going to start off with the Revell. So what we're going to do, and this is hard, and I, I haven't really mastered how to use Revell cleanly yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and carefully get a little bit on the end of the needle just to drop. And I'm just going to let it sit back a little bit on the tip. This is the hardest bit, so because I really haven't really mastered the art of getting this on neat yet. And straight away, boom. Okay, Q tip. Quickly get it off. If you get to it quick enough, you can clean it up. If you leave it there for a while, let the glue do it, see it starts eating the plastic. So, no, this is hard, so I'm going to strip that. And try and have it upright so the glue sits down. Trying to put as little as I can because I don't want to make a big mess of this. So if I just get it back, my little magic black dots that's in shot. Push down one, two, three, and it picks up. So, so it's pretty quick. So the time of adhesion, adhesion is very, very quick. So we're just going to leave that, I'm not going to disturb that at all. And I'm just going to do the same with the clear parts. Because I just want to see what fogs and what doesn't. So I'm going to put a little dollop there. And we're just going to push it right in the centre. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is a bit wobbly, so it's going to take a bit of time because obviously the clear parts um, is made of slightly different stuff than the styrene. Push it down there, so you can see that's taking a little, taking its time, getting its bond. And you actually count it if you want. So if you go back and work it out for yourself, because I don't have to stop watching anything in front of me, so you can go back and use a counter and pause and skip and play and whatever you want to do just to and if you do that and if you can if you want comment down below and just let me know what the results are as well or I might even just do it and go back and do it later on um, so I'm going to do the tetra last 
So I'm gonna get this tiny extra thing. And same deal here, just gonna put on the magic little black dot. And then, you see it's a dry fit, haven't put anything on there yet. And then using capillation, because you can't do that with a velvet because it is a very thick glue, and I haven't put any on yet either, so I don't think I've put any glue on there. Okay, so fill your action, just one, two, oh, two drops is all needed. One, two, three, pick it up, it does come up after three seconds. Okay, so press it down a bit, and we're just going to give it a blow and make sure that just want to get rid of the excess. So there's no big bubbles or blobs floating around on there. Okay, so and then once again, it's going to go clear some now clear parts, a sprue, and you can feel your action, just going to put it down there. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, about seven seconds for it to stick together. So it's definitely a bit quicker than the Revell. I'm just going to leave that there like so. Now we go to the Tetra. Tetra! Yeah. All we need to do is undo the cap. I'll bring it in shot a bit more. Now I've just got a size zero paintbrush here. And I'm pretty sure I've run it mention that don't use synthetic brushes or a plastic handled paintbrush because you will lose it and then as you can see there no glue on there it's just a test fit so we're going to apply it on there now using peeling action making sure all this stuff evaporates pretty quick one two three one, two, it almost instantly, so not even three seconds, you basically put it on and it's stuck like it's, and that's what impressed me by the first time using it, how quick it actually reacts with the styrene and how quick you get the bond, um, yeah, it's pretty much one second, as soon as you put it down there, boom, um, and now we're going to go, and this is what I'm going to do this for, because I have tried this product, and I do know how quick this reacts, um, which is why instead of these first two I've used a, a fairly straight piece of sprue and this one it's yeah it's it's off centered so the weight's gonna not gonna be in the middle just to show you how quick and strong this glue is so just drop on the brush here a couple of dollops like I do with everything else. So after a couple of seconds, she's picked up. And I can pretty much just let it sit there and it's not falling over. Okay. I can see the, all the weights on one side. No need to clean the brush out, just give it a wipe and a paper towel if you want, you know, if, if you're pretty fussy with your paint brushes. I mean, this is just a dirty old um, size. I've got heaps of these. I've bought like 10 of them just for backup spares. Um, so this test is going to be for strength of uh, clear parts to styrene. It's also going to be a comparison if any of these glues fog um, clear parts I've done a test earlier on a piece of canopy um, this side is Tamiya and this side is Tetra and I couldn't see any fogging on either either um, side um, but for some funny reason when I did build this aircraft 
Um, this was off the two hour build, Paul Bretland's two hour speed build, and this was the actual plane I built for the uh, build. And I used, because um, I only had two hours, I, I didn't have the Tetra at the time, I wish I did. Uh, the Tammy Extra Thin I used on the canopy down around the bottom, and there is a bit of fogging um, along here. Now, why I, I mention this is because on the aircraft here, the the canopy is an enclosed space where, so you know, there's not going to be much chance for the gases and vapors to escape, so it is going to fog up. Um, this one, so I guess this test and using the glue on that was it's pretty unfair to say, you know, like it's um, it, they're two completely different tests because this was just a strip on the bottom. If I bring it in closely, there's just a hole that goes straight through because there is no front and back on this. It's a middle piece of the cockpit, so there would have been heaps of room for that. If there was any gassing gassing involved, there's a lot of room for it to escape. But um, neither one, like, as long as um, neither one fogs up, you know, that's what you really would care about. But for some funny reason, like I said before, this gassed up a little bit, the Tammy Extra Thin, so it's... I mean, it was very minute too, guys. I don't think it was like putting super glow on there and the whole thing just goes, poof, it just went white. So um, maybe as I get into more builds with these new this new product, um, and even with the Tammy Asher thing, I might just do little tests as well, just on the slight little corners and things, just to make sure that it doesn't fog up. Um, Ian, Ian. Powell has said that this doesn't fog up. So if you watch, if you go back and watch the Queensland Model Hobbies Expo uh, 2014 video, there is a, a quick little video of of Ian showing uh, myself and um, Benny Mac attack the product. A quick demonstration before I bought it. So it was nice of him to show us that because a lot of guys don't do that nowadays. So I just want to thank you, Ian, for yeah, getting me onto this stuff. But it's been, you know, maybe five minutes, I guess now. Four or five minutes. And I'm just having a quick play. And realistically, I should let these glues dry overnight to you know, see the full strength of it. But just for this test, I just want to show in, you know, three or four minutes how quick the glues start going off or start binding the plus. The, the stirrings, I should say. So if I just give the the Ravel, and this is the Ravel, so you can see there. It's oh, hang on. So I'm not trying to trick you or anything. Yeah, there's the Ravel one. Okay. So I'm just going to turn on the side, and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a wobble. Okay. Like it's still. Like I've, obviously, if I move it back and forward, like very um, very aggressively, it's going to break. But just gently, uh, if I zoom in, just so you can see. Because I don't want you guys to feel cheated and think that I'm trying to trick you in any way. So if I just wobble it, you know, it's only just slight finger pressure on there. There is, it, it does, you can see it, it's, I can pull it down, it sort of um, gives it a little bit. I'm not going to touch the clear star, the clear parts ones yet, I'm just going to let that dry a bit more. Um, the Tetra, uh, it's, that's pretty much, it's not set, okay, we'll start again, sorry. Here's the Tetra. Okay, it's it's not set completely, obviously, but it has got snap to it. When you, um, it's almost like that doing sound, a typical doing when you flick something. It's it's um, snaps back a little bit, so you can see that that's drying or binding quite quickly. And the Tammy Extra Thin is slightly not as springy like there's not as much snap in it so it's kind of that has a least snap so at this stage for this test I'm going to say um, if we move Tetra down here okay oops that's Ravel that's a Tammy up Ravel. Uh, I'll zoom out a bit because I was wondering why I couldn't see it. Okay, so that's the Tetra. Um, I should have better put the Tammy down here. Ravel goes down there. So, 
that's my opinion so far, or the results of how quick the glues are sort of setting um, on the styrene, the styrene setting. So pretty much, that's one, one to tetra. Um, so that's one of the first tests for me. Now we're going to look at um, neatness. Okay, I'm going to look at the Revell here. And I didn't really put much down, so it is um, compared to the first trial I've done. I made a mess of the Revell, so yeah, it's it could have been slightly neater, but. Yeah, there's still a bit of glue pushed down on the edge here, the dollop there, and there's a dollop at the front there. I mean, I'm, like you might be able to see it, but more than likely, anything it's just going to be a big wide out on there. Um, I'm trying to find it on this side, but down the bottom on this side, where you pick it up, you can see that little bit of glue that hangs out. So if you're trying to clean that up and that little, on a bit of armor or something, it's going to yeah, you're going to be trying to try and pick that piece out, a bit of glue out. Now uh, the Tamiya, look at it. I'm actually going to look at both. I'm going to look at the Tamiya and the Tetra at the same time. Okay, so very, uh, pretty much identical, okay. Yeah, so they're pretty much tie. So the, the Tetra and the Tamiya at the moment are pretty much tied with cleanliness and how the joins went together. The Revell, yeah. Move that around, have a look under some lights. Okay, there's a little bit of fogging down the bottom here. Alright, ever so... Yep, sorry guys, that's my Facebook going off. So, ever so slightly, probably down the... Probably a mil down from the bottom. Now, whether you see that or not, I don't know. Okay, there's a tiny bit of fogging down the bottom where it's slowly starting to creep up. And I think that's just the plastic being eaten. I don't think it's gassing or anything like that. But as we let this sit, up, sit a bit more, we'll be able to see it. Uh, now the Tamiya is not as sturdy as Revell. Okay, so like the sprue is still very, and that's actually quite sturdy. This is still very sort of floppy. Doesn't have as much stiffness um, as the Revell does. And gassing and fogging yeah so I I can't see any really okay the the bottom of this is actually a lot clearer than the Revell test so the Tamiya stuff is actually quite it passed for fogging so maybe yeah once again it's not an enclosed area so that's um, I can't really give you true results with that um, and the tetra well it's actually got a really strong yeah she doesn't move much at all and looking at the bottom and it probably has you should look at the bottom here that's the tetra okay and this one here is the Tamiya. So if I get both in my hands, okay, that's the Revell. I don't know if you can see see them with fogs up. Okay, there we go. So if I spin that around, that's the Tetris. So you can read it. Okay, and you can see that. Well, I can see it anyway. I don't know if you can see it. But just on the very bottom, there's the tiniest bit where the plastic's starting to go white from the glue. 
Okay, that's pretty hard to see. It's on a white base, and the Tammy has none, and the Tetra has none. Okay, oops. So we'll put them back down there. that now so pretty much once again um, the Tetra for me wins the test again there's it even looks I don't know it's maybe I don't know what it is. It's and like I'm not I'm not trying to take anything away from any of these products at all, but you know, they've all had their own purpose, whether you use the Revel to glue heavy things and you know it's they make thin glue for a reason, they make thick glue for a reason. Um, I'm just not as happy with the bottom of the Tamiya and the bottom like as the Tetra I mean the Tetra is just a lot lot has a lot of a has a lot cleaner uh, join at the bottom it's a lot sturdier like it's so I mean there's <sighs> seriously guys out of this test yeah, the te the Tetra wins hands down. Okay, like value for money, um, well for me anyway in Australia. Okay, so if you're an Australian, if you're one of my Australian subscribers, um, and obviously you're going to pay more if you're from overseas because getting things to and from Australia from overseas, yeah, they just very very expensive, guys. So you might get a shock when you do try to order something, um, and and then you get the price or you get the bill um, it's only because it's Australian um, you know, just things just the cost of getting things posted because we're so isolated and so far away so it's you know, it's got nothing to do with um, any of the companies charging ridiculous prices it's just yeah it's just the way the mail service is guys so yeah apologize for that if you do want some and it, it is a bit expensive but for you Australian guys out there or even New Zealand uh, modelers, go get yourself some. I highly recommend it. Um, <clears throat> and also, I mean, I paid for this stuff. I I didn't get this Tetra uh, for free or anything like that. I actually paid for it, and and I'm still saying go buy yourself some. It's it's going to last you a long time. It's like as I ran through the prices, be as I ran through the prices before. Um, you know, one liter of the stuff for seventy-one dollars. Like that is just ridiculous. I worked it out the other day to get a liter of this Tamiya stuff. You're looking around about, um, or you, it was, yeah, what was it? It was about hundred something dollars, I think it was. Um, more. Yeah, go get cut. Go get yourself some, guys. It's. So far, I'm really, really excited about this product. I'm gonna say to you, yeah, go get some. Gonna like it. If not, you're gonna love it, and you're gonna come back for more and more. The only thing, the only downside of it is, it has a really strong smell. So, yeah, definitely keep it away from your kids. Don't let your kids play with it. Um, keep it out of the way of small children. Um, don't sniff it. Um, and just make sure you read all the safety instructions on any product you get and they're clearly labeled here in the red red section of the label make sure you read them all follow the instructions and you'll have no problems um, so yeah so for this review tetra thumbs up big thumbs up and um, let me know when you do get some either yeah, just send me a PM on my Google Plus account. Um, yeah, just let even comment down below if you do get some. Let me know how you go. If you've run into any problems on your models with this stuff, yeah, just give me give me some of your feedback because 
at the moment I don't know anybody else in the modeling community that has this um, it's probably been out for a while too so and yeah I've first time I've seen it so yeah let us know um, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next review next unboxing even just yeah next random video I put up so thanks for watching guys you take care stay safe and happy modeling see you in the next one guys bye